beef. So the section that um, that um, that I'm oversee is contains our floodplain mapping program and our flood warning program, um, the National Flood Insurance Program for North Carolina, and the State Surveyor's Office. And I'm also the State Surveyor. A little history about our project. Um, our the flood map and then flood warning program really started around 2000. And, and our, this building footprint is, we collect it mainly for those two uh, project areas, but the data set is widely used by, by other state agencies, by the public uh, and local governments here in North Carolina. And so the goal is to collect it one time for multiple uses. Um, and so around 1999, 2000, North Carolina was impacted by two very big hurricanes, Hurricane Fran and Floyd. Um, and at that time, North Carolina made the decision to um, partner with FEMA and become a, what we call a cooperative technical state, where we assume responsibility of developing our flood maps. And, and some of the key elements of that flood map, besides the engineering and surveying modeling, is building footprints. And so um, we started the floodplain mapping program in 2001, on uh, flood warning program a couple of years later. Um, we we have gone through the state and remapped the whole state um, since that beginning. And now we're almost through our second um, iteration of mapping the state or with new flood maps and what we call our maintenance mode. So we've come back and um, look at the areas we may not have done studies in and, and, um, and doing studies in those. And as a result of the floodplain mapping program, we've developed a tool or an application called FRIS, Flood Risk Information System. And this provides information about uh, the special flood hazard areas, um, the 100-year floodplain, the 500-year floodplain. Um, but we also have layers of building footprints. And the way we use that layer in our in FRIS is that we can visually, you know, visually show which buildings are in or out of the special flood hazard area. We can also um, add information about each building as far as what type of building it is, um, its elevation, and do risk information um, to determine how much impact uh, is going to occur if a flood occurs, a 100-year flood event occurs to that area. So, um, so we 2010, when we first developed our first uh, building footprint layer uh, using aerial imagery. And we really haven't done a widespread update of it since 2010. So uh, we started about two years ago um, doing an update, um, especially in some of the areas in North Carolina, the urban areas that have grown um, dramatically along our coast, because we knew um, that we were missing a lot of building footprints. And one of the things that we can do with uh, with our frizz and with all the data we have is after an event, um, we can use our different data layers to do um, damage estimates. And again, we need to have a good accurate layer of uh, the building footprints to do that. So since we started a couple of years ago, we worked with another state agency to um, utilize uh, AI machine learning to develop um, a building footprint layer, but we found that um, we were spending more time cleaning it up because of the noise in that than we were uh, doing manually. So, um, so we we have staff now that is doing some mapping, and and we worked um, after discussing this with Maggie. Uh, we decided let's do a pilot project using OpenStreetMap and uh, utilize volunteers to help us update. Um, the building footprints. And we picked Cumberland County. Cumberland County is kind of this, um, south of Raleigh, North Carolina, which is kind of the central part of the state. And we picked Cumberland County because it's a combination of urban and rural areas. And it also has a military base on it. So it had a good combination of uh, different areas to map. Um, and so our goal is um, to see if we can use volunteers to help us update this. We fly aerial imagery here in North Carolina, a quarter of the state, um, once every year. So our goal is to get uh, that 2010 um, data layer up to date to the latest imagery. 
Um, the imagery that um, that you're using here for this pilot project was uh, 2021 imagery. And then uh, when we come back in the next cycle, we will uh, do that for your update. So we feel like we can get um, that 10 year from 2010 up to our current imagery. Then we fly new imagery every four years. Uh, it won't take us as long to keep everything up to date. And then if we do have an event like a hurricane, um, we'll have uh, accurate and update information that we can use to do impacts to a flood event or any other type of event. So it's very important for our, for our floodplain mapping program, uh, for our national flood insurance program um, to have this building footprint layer up to date. The other application that we have is, um, and if you want to go to our, our flood application, uh, just Google uh, NC FRIS, F-R-I-S. Um, and you can see an, an example of our um, of our flood map and, and see information of um, what you can see uh, as far as the buildings, what information we populate those building footprints with. Um, the other application that uh, is very critical that the building footprint is very critical to is, is our flood warning system. And you can go to that and um, view that. It's called FIMA, Flood Inundation Mapping and Alert Network. And um, just Google NC FIMA. And we just released our, um, what we call FIMA 3.0. Um, we partner um, a lot of the work with our floodplain, uh, flood warnings with our Department of Transportation. We partner with them um, to install gauges and to maintain, maintain gauges. And, when we had the previous version of FIMA, our Department of Transportation had created a, um, a version called FIMA T. Um, FIMA was, was mainly for uh, building impacts. FIMA T was um, transportation impacts. And so when we developed or we updated to our new version of 3.0, uh, we merged um, the old FIMA with building impacts with the transportation layer. Uh, so now you can go into FIMA and see both building impact layer um, impacts and transportation. Um, and so, again, it's important to have um, that building information um, that's up to date and accurate because um, we have in the FIMA a tool called Scenario. In that scenario mode, um, we have developed what we call libraries. And basically, they are a um, for every half foot of elevation, um, as the gauge tells you what the elevation of the water is, we can visualize where that extent of flooding is. And by having um, the building footprint layer um, accurate and up to date, we can intersect that water level with the buildings and determine um, the impact to the building uh, and how much water is in the building. Uh, and so it's a very uh, important tool for the public uh, for local emergency managers to determine um, which buildings are going to be impacted, where they need to evacuate uh, individuals during a flood event, um, and then again with the transportation layer, that's that. So, so those are our our main uses at emergency management of the building footprint. But again, we we work with our local uh, counties to share that data so that we don't have duplication. So we can collect this data once and share it with um, multiple agencies. There are many other state agencies in North Carolina that utilize the building footprint uh, data layer. Um, and so we're looking forward to working with OpenStreetMap to um, help us update um, Cumberland County and get it up to date the latest imagery.